The student body and class elections are held for the coming school year. And KEHS takes a look at one of those popular parts of being a knight. Hello and welcome to KEHS. I'm Grace Kant. And I'm Braden Crow. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Night Vision News. Student body elections lay an important foundation for the Episcopal community. For more details, reporter Reed Sasser brings us the story. Student body speeches were recently held behind me in the Benitez Chapel. I talked to the recently elected student body president, Braylon Thompson, and how you can get elected. Um, it's kind of something I always wanted to do. Uh, last year I ran for a class president with intentions of uh, hopefully one day becoming student body president uh, because I love school so much, it's done so much for me, and I was just hoping I could return the favor. Um, the role of student council advisors is to help guide and support and share um, ideas and what the school will allow and not allow um, for student council events, help the officers um, be the best and, can, and participate and do all that they want to do throughout the year. During elections, our job is to help make sure that the speeches are episc appropriate, that the candidates aren't giving information that isn't true or, or promises that can't happen. Um, and giving them advice for how to be their best selves as they run for office. Uh, when I found out I won, I was really excited. Uh, I felt really good. I felt like uh, the student body made the right choice. And uh, I'm just excited to move forward and make next year everybody's best year out of this one. Um, the format is that we begin with a meet the candidate session during chapel where each of the candidates give a quick introduction to who they are and what they would like to do while at Episcopal. After that, they will go everybody goes to advisory where there is a website available that has videos and the can from the candidates about special topics as well as resumes so you can learn more about the candidates and then the ballots come out and it's up to the students to vote for who they believe the best choice for, for khs news i'm reed sasser back to the studio thank you reed at a fiscal high school students have many options for our fabulous lunch menu let's get some information on the ehs meal plan and fan favorites from the menu with reporter Porter Miller. Here at Episcopal High School, we have a wide range of variety of food to choose from. Let's hear from Chef John about how the menu is set up and from a few students about what their favorite food at Episcopal is. Um, Episcopal has so many good lunch options, but my favorite is the Buffalo Mac because it's so good. When we're designing the menu, we want to be able to expose all the students to, you know, different cuisines, different cultures, and give them a, a good the variety to, to um, do also that things here. that they maybe haven't tried before or are too scared to try. My favorite meal here at Episcopal High School is the buffalo mac and cheese because I think it tastes great and it really fills me up. Okay, so everyone's favorite bread is the cauliflower bread. It's a gluten-free bread, cauliflower flatbread. They like it with everything grilled cheese ham and cheese turkey and cheese turkey is your favorite meat turkey and provolone or chicken salad and the longest line I would think would probably be B lunch that is the longest line we have and that is the older kids in that uh, the younger kids are in my A lunch and uh, it's pretty good over here I think everybody liked the sandwich thank you chef John and all the students who gave us that wonderful feedback back to you Thank you, Porter. Sounds like the Episcopal Food Service will continue to be a hit. As the theater program closes its productions for the 2023 school year, KHS took a closer look at the last performance of the season. The student directed one acts. The performances attest to these knowledge these students have learned through their time in EHS on stage. Reporter Chase Hutchins has more on the story. The student one acts are our last performance of the year. Our students are both the directors and the actors of these performances. Mr. Brock, our head of the theater department, gave us an insight of how the students prepare for these acts. So what they will do is for like the first four weeks in class, we'll talk about directing theory. They will pick their plays. Sometimes students will pick plays that are not exactly Episcopal appropriate, so we have to do some work there. Um, and then once the shows are selected, it's kind of handed off to them. They then do auditions and they cast their shows. We get both on and off stage, all done by students. And so me and Mr. Ravaz kind of then at that point sit back and watch. And if things get to the point where we need to step in, we'll step in. But I'm uh, happy to say that's never really happened. We'll, if we see something that's like, ooh, then we'll uh, give the note, but it's up to the director to make the final decision. So basically everybody had to fill out an audition form and come in on a Saturday 
and we picked some scenes from the script and we had them read them and then I took some notes on my performance and then I chose my cast based on that. So I went through a website that has a couple of different scripts and I read I think like eight in total and then I just picked the one that I felt like I could have the most creative choices with. Thanks for a fantastic student-led performance. I'm reporting from KHS News. I'm Chase Hutchins. Stand out nights. Thank you, Chase, for that special report. The Visual Arts Department is getting ready for its spring exhibition, and there are a lot of exciting things happening on campus centered around the event. Here's my co-anchor, Grace Kant, with the inside scoop. Today we'll be interviewing photography teacher Mr. Storley and art student Hannah Rose. So this is the spring 2023 uh, art show, EHS art show, and uh, every student that is in currently in a studio art class actually has a piece in the overall show across campus, but this specific gallery space is uh, work chosen by an outside juror. So there's one for photography and there's one for studio arts, and that juror, with no affiliation, affiliation to EHS at all, actually decides what exactly goes on the walls and then places uh, first, second, third place, and four honorable mentions for all the categories. Uh, I'm in advanced ceramics and I like it because every day it gives me time to like calm down and just work on my piece. And also um, you have like the choice to make whatever you want and it's cool to like see like your thought come to life. That's all, thank you, bye. Thanks Grace, sounds fun. This past Tuesday, the EHS Choir had a short recital which they performed a piece of music that they took with them to Carnegie Hall during their department trip to New York. Reporter Brooklyn Hermans joins us now to tell us a little about the choir's performance. This past Tuesday, the Episcopal High School Choir had their Masterworks concert in which they performed a piece of music that they also recently took with them to Carnegie Hall for their choir department trip. We got together with Mr. Ashby, the head of the choir, as well as one of the choir students, to ask them a little bit about the concert and what it was for. This past week we had our Masterworks concert and we performed the Requiem by John Rutter. We started learning this music uh, late last year, 2022, before Advent Chapel. It was really hard for us at first, but we kind of got through it as a team. I think one of the things I really like about leading the choir is the fact that we can achieve more as a group than we are able to as individual musicians. My favorite part about singing with the Episcopal Choir is the community. Um, it's not really a community per se, but our little class feels like almost a family, um, no matter what's going on outside of choir. Thanks so much for watching your update on choir. I'm Brooklyn Hermans and now it's back to the studio. Thanks, Brooklyn. Performing at Carnegie Hall must have been such a cool experience for the group. Be sure to catch the choir spring concert on Tuesday, April 26th at 6 p.m. in the Underwood Theater. ETV has been hard at work this semester to put together their spring show. Reporter Kylie Kane was able to get exclusive clips from the ETV team and learn all about the process that goes into the making of the episode. The ETV team works hard all year creating films that are personal to them. Here's an inside look on how they are created and some of their favorite clips. My film ideas, um, and my groups of course, uh, we come up with it through what the people want, what EHS is really um, gonna react well to. And we found that in the sports videos, we think it brings the community together and that's more beneficial to us and to the community. And everyone has a good time with them rather than a more traditional film. Usually these films can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. For example, our baseball video took about a month, a little over, maybe five or six weeks. But things like the football video took the entire football season to film. So it really varies, but definitely a lot of time we put into these projects. ETV is special to me because I get to share something that I enjoy doing through making movies, as well as it's something everyone can really re like interact with and have a good time watching, talking about, uh, sharing with their friends. I think it's a great way to integrate myself into the community. Um, usually over like summer or like winter break, we write down like every idea we have and then we come together at the beginning of the year and discuss them all, um, share ideas and then build off of each other's ideas and that's how we like form groups. We just 
um, join whatever we think is interesting to us. Um, yeah, and then mainly brainstorming together. Um, usually since the first day of class, we're, brain we're like putting out our ideas. So about, and then until the show, so about four months, I think, we're going through the whole process of making the film. Um, it's special to me because we can, we have the freedom to do whatever project we want um, and to express ourselves creatively through film. And um, I really like that about ETV. Thank you to the ETV team for sharing your hard work and creativity with us. We cannot wait to watch them this spring. Reporting from KEHS News, I'm Kylie Kane. Thank you, Kylie, for that amazing report. I certainly enjoy all the videos ETV creates and cannot wait to watch the show. This spring, EHS Lacrosse is looking to make a run for the state chip. But along the way, the boys team will be graduating many seniors. Reporter Tyler Bloomgren spoke with some of the seniors about their final home game and what it means to them and what they are doing to prepare for the state tournament. This year, EHS Boys Lacrosse is looking hopeful for a chip for the first time in 20 years. They also hosted senior night and are graduating many seniors. Today we interviewed some of the players on their thoughts. Um, senior night's very important because this is the seniors last year and um, this is like a special night to them and they'll all be uh, congratulated for all their accomplishments and this is their probably last time playing lacrosse and yeah. Senior night is tonight after our 5.30 game against Katie. We have 12 senior boys, four senior girl managers. This has been a fantastic class in that we won 16 games last year and went to the final four. The year before we won 16 games and went to the final eight in the state. These guys have a tremendous legacy and I hope the next group of seniors can say the same. Good luck, boys lacrosse, on the rest of the season. I'm Tyler Bloomgren. Back to you in the studio. Well, that's all we have this week on Night Vision News. I'm Grace Kant. And I'm Braden Crow from all of us at KEHS News. Thank you for joining us. And, and go, go Knights! Knights.